Dr. Dusko Erlich was born in Croatia, and where he did his uh, undergraduate studies. Then he moved to France, uh, to the University of Paris, uh, to do the postgraduate studies. And then early in the 70s, moved to California, to Stanford, for, to start a research career in genomics. So in the 70s, uh, genomics was almost an unknown uh, science. But he joined uh, the lab of uh, Stanford University of Professor Joshua Ledenberg, who uh, got the Nobel Prize in Medicine at uh, 33 years of age, as I learned today, Nobel Prize in Medicine. And then he spent uh, uh, several years uh, studying genes in bacteria and humans, uh, where he started to publish uh, very uh, relevant papers. Then he moved back to France in, in, in the 80s, first to INSERM, which is the institution in France for medical research. And then he uh, moved to, uh, to INRA, which is uh, another institution for research related with uh, food and agriculture, but also related with health, where he founded the uh, uh, group of microbial uh, genomics in, the, in, I think, in the 80s, in 86. So his career has been brilliant, with more than 300 papers uh, published, many science and nature papers. He's one of the highly cited authors in microbiology in the ICI <laughs> Web of Knowledge. And his age index is 58. I think this is really uh, 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 very remarkable. And uh, he has been now uh, uh, running uh, a very successful European uh, uh, projects um, directed at, the, uh, at the, the deciphering of the microbial communities living in the human gut that are in association also with the American studies uh, founded by NIH. He probably will, will talk about this. And he, this year, is chair of the steering committee of the International Human Microbiome Consortium, which is a consortium with, uh, with uh, uh, funding agencies and uh, investigators from United States, Europe, Australia, Japan, South Korea, China. So it's, it's really a, a global effort to, to, for us to understand better the microbial communities living in association with the humans. So it's my pleasure to have you here that you accepted to come with us. For, uh, It's absolutely wonderful to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. I feel highly honored to deliver a lecture at your 13th uh, annual conference uh, for, the, for the hospital. It's a wonderful place. And uh, I enjoyed uh, very much, even if I didn't understand uh, exactly what was going on, these prices that were delivered, because it shows how many enthusiastic and clever young people are associated with, uh, with this uh, place. So, uh, I will uh, try to deliver a talk which has really three parts. First is a short introduction on the importance of, uh, of uh, human associ associated uh, microbes. The second describes the project that uh, uh, is studying these microbes, in particular the intestinal microbes. And the third part describes a little bit of the results that we have obtained. Now, I was told that a very important lady is going to come at one moment, and you can't have ladies waiting. So I'll stop my talk as soon as the lady comes in. I'll cut it short or long. I didn't know exactly how much time I had. I said, well, maybe I have an hour and a half or something. Don't worry. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I guess this can be used for moving the slides. And uh, I'll start the talk by reminding you, uh, giving a couple of simple definitions. Metagenome can be defined as the ensemble of genes and genomes of microbes that live in a given ecological niche. And metagenomics is an approach to study characterized composition, dynamics, what have you, of uh, the microbiome uh, ensemble of these microbes from the 
uh, niche you want to study. The power of metagenomic analysis is that it can uh, tell you about microbes which you can't culture. Because you just uh, grab a sample, extract the DNA, and sequence the whole DNA. Now, uh, these, these days, you present DNA sequencing in terms of these lighted dots, because that's how, how people do it right now. From these sequences, you assemble contigues, longer reads, and you identify the genes. And these are the genes which characterize microbes from a given niche. Sometimes you can assemble genomes, but that's not really the objective. The objective is to identify the genes. Let's turn to human intestinal microbiota. Why are people interested in them? Well, there are ten, tenfold more microbes in the gut than the cells of our body, as you well know. They are interfaced between food and epithelium. They are in contact with the first pool of immune cells and second pool of neural cells of the body. They can be considered a true organ, which contributes in a major way to protection of our, our health and well-being. Major functions of microbiota are expressed at the interface with food, host, and other microbes. And uh, it has been ex a view has been expressed that uh, maybe we can be considered as a supra-organism composed of our own cells and of the microbes that live in our body. There are many functions of microbes intestinal microbiota, they have been uh, uh, identified already. Some have been known for quite some time, like a barrier effect against infection, metabolism of otherwise undigestible fiber, fibers, production of vitamins that our body needs. Some are more recent, like implication in availability of micronutrients or metabolism of xenobiotics. Others, like maturation of immune system, are even more recent, and implication energy harvest and fat storage has also been reported. So there is, facing that, a worldwide movement that has started a few years ago to characterize human microbiome and to go after the target of the human genome to the target of human metagenome. I have listed here a few initiatives. They won't go very much through them. Many are public. More recently, private foundations have also joined this, uh, this effort. And uh, last year, there was a summary, kind of review paper in Nature, where a number of these projects have uh, been identified. And that led to constitution of the International Human Microbiome Consortium, which kind of coordinates different activities within uh, these uh, uh, various projects. A number of members are listed here, and uh, this is something which is quite important in trying to promote uh, good cooperation, exchange, uh, standardization, comparison of, of results, to increase synergy of the whole effort. Now, I think that most people do agree that intestinal microbes are important factors in health and disease. And that raises what is to me a key question. Well, in what way? And one approach that we are trying to follow is search for associations of the microbial genes and human phenotypes. The human geneticists have spent their lives, and they are still spending much time trying to find association between human genes and human phenotypes. But there are so many microbial genes in our body that it's quite legitimate to try to find out whether they do affect human phenotypes. Metahit. The metahit approach is in order to search for these associations. First, 
establish a reference catalog of the genes uh, from intestinal microbiota by metagenomic and genomic sequencing. Then develop generic tools based on this reference set in order to be able to accomplish profiling of genes in each individual. We, of course, know, you know, you doctors know how to phenotype humans, but we need tools to associate profiles of genes to these phenotypes. In MetaHit, we focus on two uh, pathologies, IBD and obesity. And we want to use the profiling tools to search associations of microbial genes and these diseases. We also want to screen for microbial genes that are involved in functional host microbe interaction and study the genes that are associated with the disease. And of course, bioinformatics overlays all these activities which involve very complex data, heterogeneous data, and high amounts of data. The partners of MetaHit, 12 European, one Chinese institutions, nine countries, two continents, nine public for private institutions, but most important, the people. And I think that we have really a stellar team. You maybe recognize this guy here. It's very important, and I'm sure that people interested in obesity will recognize Olaf Pedersen. There are a number of people here who are rather well known. MetaHit budget is about 20 million euros. With a contribution from the uh, European Commission of about 11.4 million euros, there are about 50 scientists who work uh, in MetaHit, and we have started just about two years ago. Uh, 